Good morning, everyone, and thank you for logging on to our virtual HFS Leadership Breakfast. I'm Tanya Babich, a proud HFS board member and anchor here at ABC7 Chicago. This is my second time welcoming you to our annual fundraiser from my station studio. We had all hoped that last year's online gathering would be a one-time only event, and yet, here we are again. Well, hopefully we find each other in good health and strong in spirit with ample gratitude for those two things and compassion for those who have not been so fortunate in this tumultuous time. So many of us are here because we count our lucky stars for our health, for access to work, education, a roof over our heads and food security. And perhaps some of you, like me, have become interested in or involved with HFS scholars because those things didn't come easily in your family and you want to ensure that the investment others made in you is paid forward to this next generation of students. Like many of our scholars, I am the daughter of immigrants, my mother from Chile, my father from Serbia. I'm also the first in my family to go to college. I stand today from this studio on the shoulders of those who sacrificed so I could have opportunities that others in my family did not, and those who opened doors because they saw in me a desire and the potential to achieve. I am so thankful to those who helped where circumstance might have otherwise stood in my way. So many of the stories I have shared with our city from this newsroom have chronicled how Chicago's most vulnerable communities have been subject to some of the worst effects of this pandemic. Health disparities have widened for our city's black and Latino families, as many have performed frontline work but lag in access to care and a vaccine. Rising crime rates have made some families fearful to leave their homes. And remote learning has put a tremendous strain on students already at a disadvantage for access to educational resources. So the work we have before us today is to create stability where the world might otherwise try to undermine a student's ambitions, to reassure and restore hope for those families that together we stand strong. HFS Chicago Scholars has retooled and revamped the way it reaches and serves our students to ensure stability at a time when everything seems uncertain. Our mentors seamlessly transition to virtual and safe, socially distanced forms of engagement to ensure that our scholars continue to have the support they need to stay focused, or maybe just to blow off some steam. I, along with dozens of other board members and mentors, conducted interviews with hundreds of applicants to welcome our new class of deserving scholars and to lighten the load a little for their families. And with fundraisers like this one, we ensure that our organization's mission and scholars are well-funded no matter what the world or today's newscast throws at them. Today you'll hear about the impact of our work from HFS scholars who have come up through the organization's ranks. You'll also hear from our distinguished honoree whose story will inspire you to step out of your comfort zone to advocate for and to empower others. But first, it is my honor to welcome my friend and our HFS Executive Director, Desiree Pepper Benzant. Thank you, Tanya. Good morning. This has truly been a very unusual year for education and for our scholars. Students all over the world have been impacted on so many different levels. Students who were accustomed to attending classes in person were forced to attend school virtually or in a hybrid setting. And in some cases, they were homeschooled. Some experienced homelessness and even foodlessness. But despite these challenges, HFS has continued to focus on what we do best, helping one student at a time by way of our three pillars of academic excellence, college readiness, and lifelong mentoring. We understand that through hard work, students can achieve anything that they put their minds to. Many of our students are the first to attend college and graduate. I am happy to announce that our most recent college graduation class, the HFS class of 2017, all have graduated from college in 2021. And we couldn't be more proud of them and excited about all they have achieved. HFS scholars journey towards excellence. Each scholar finds their own path and we journey with them, learn from them, 
and help them achieve their goals. Our scholars have gone on to become doctors, lawyers, and educators, all making a difference in the world. We are incredibly proud of the programming that we offer our scholars. Each year, scholars are challenged to reach their goals, try new things, and uncover their potential. Even during the pandemic, they did just that. Our seniors graduated and went on to attend some of the top colleges and universities throughout the U.S. with substantial scholarship awards and financial aid. HFS strives to continue providing opportunities each year. This year, we have taken on our largest freshman class yet. There are 58 students from 42 different public and private elementary schools throughout the city of Chicago. And we are so looking forward to their success and immerse themselves in the HFS academic excellence, college readiness, and lifelong mentoring pillars. I would like to thank each of you for joining us today to celebrate HFS Chicago Scholars and the work that we do to support young people throughout the Chicagoland area. We are certainly stronger together. So sit back and enjoy a cup of coffee. I know that you will be inspired by what you see here today. And I hope that you will be compelled to share our story, take action and get involved and continue supporting HFS for many years to come. Please visit us on our website by using the link below like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and repost on LinkedIn. Please use the chat feature in this presentation to comment, like, and interact with others viewing this presentation. Thank you for being with us. Good morning. I am excited for our alumnus keynote speakers, HFS Chicago Scholars, Wendy Perez Shaquilas, and Lucia Butello. I am so very proud of them and all of their accomplishments. They both were excellent scholars who have continued to immerse themselves in the HFS community by helping students who are just like them. They embody what it means to be an HFS scholar. Please help me welcome them. I have been given the privilege to mold these high school students from their freshman year to their senior year and provide them with skills that they're going to need to not only succeed in high school and to be high achieving, but also to succeed in life overall. It also means that, you know, you're providing them with these skills and you're also providing them with these opportunities and these chances to do more or to have the option to do more if it is sought out. Basically creating a community for them. It's creating a home base for them, a place where they feel safe, a place where they feel and know that they can come back to and know that they have this support system that's going to carry them two years from now, four years from now, and hopefully 10 years from now. With HFS, I am a mentor. I'm part of the Young Professional Board as well as the Managing Director of Academics. Um, so along with Lucy, I am the director for the class of 2022, um, but now in my new role, I do oversee the other directors and providing support for them and then ultimately for the families and the scholars. So as a director, I'm, I'm part of the village. I'm part of the village that it takes for our scholars to succeed. We help them every step of the way. We give them those resources to take it beyond the classroom. And so we talk about academics, we talk about sports, things that they're involved with in school, but we also talk about that outside support that they need. So whether it's with their family or in their community, it's just helping them become that overround scholar that you know we know that they're capable of doing. They're already smart, they already have all that going for them. It's just we're giving them the tools that they need to further succeed later on. So HFS has definitely grown over the years um, with their scholar st staff and their resources all together. Um, so our scholar class was roughly 20 or so scholars and now we're at 60, which is amazing. And so they've accommodated that with, you know, extra staff members and really just realize that, that the need's there for our families. And so they continue growing with the times and growing with the needs that our families have. And so it's been amazing to see what, you know, they've come this far and where they're going after this. 
My name is Lucia Botello and I am a teacher. I work at a school on the far south side of Chicago. I have a lovely fifth grade homeroom and I went to high school at St. Francis de Sales and I graduated undergrad at DePaul University and I currently attend DePaul University as well for grad school. My name is Wendy Perez. I graduated from St. Ignatius College Prep in 2011. Afterwards, I went on to Northwestern University as a Chick Evans Scholar. Now I'm working for the American Medical Association as well as graduate school at UIC, um, earning my master's in healthcare administration. We were actually the same scholar class as yes. well. Yes, so we, we were are. scholars together for all four years. Mm -hmm. Something that's, or someone that has always been my inspiration has been my mom. Um, I come from a very strong family that they've, you know, they always want what's best for their children. And it's always been me and my mom ever since I was little. And so she made sure that I had everything I needed. Even though she didn't have an education, didn't have any type of background, she knew she wanted something different for me. The youth inspire, inspire me every day. Um, oh gosh, I'm going to cry. The youth themselves are inspiring. They are my inspiration. They are the reason why I keep going. With the past year and a half, HFS has kept it together and they were stronger together um, with board of directors, with staff, with our mentors. The whole family has kind of been together through it all and making sure that our families are receiving the services that they need throughout the year and continue to do so as, you know, we're not sure where this pandemic is going. We've continued our programming, continue our mentoring, everything is going strong now more than ever just because we know how important those services are to our families. Yeah, especially with COVID, the fact that we were able to increase our incoming class and then still continue with the programming, it's something that it's kind of impressive that a lot of our families might not know, but yeah, the fact that we were able to increase our freshman class as well as increase our staff during this whole COVID pandemic. Sometimes applying can feel like a little bit of a sprint, especially if you're not doing everything like as on time as you should be, but it is a marathon. You are in it from the long haul from the beginning of August until for me, I made my decision in April. It is a thing that is constantly on your mind. The first thing that like a lot of teenagers say is I leaned on my family. Um, and I did, but at the same time, it's kind of hard when like they don't understand what I'm going through. But I feel like the people that did help me through that time was all the staff at HFS and that's not me just saying that because you guys are sitting right in front of me but genuinely like that is what is what helped me the most going to Mr. Seuss's weekly like hangouts like I would just go there and just sit there for a half an hour and just update him on like what's going on right now how's school going how's applying going like how are you feeling about it because the staff at HFS like understood completely and were helping us through it every step of the way. My name is Brooke Arundel. I am from the class of 2021. I graduated from Marist High School and in the fall I will be attending the University of Wisconsin-Madison where I will be majoring in accounting. So I would definitely say they did start us off early. Like I remember it was junior year we started thinking about these things like early. They said start your um, college essay. Start thinking about what you like. Even if you don't want to like actually start it, start like writing ideas down like the notes app or just like putting it somewhere so you have ideas so you're not completely bombarded when it comes to like the actual writing process. For me specifically, the things that helped the most was even though HFS did start, off, start us off early, they also had a lot of like college related conferences and things mm -hmm. like that where we get, to, we get to meet with the different colleges. Yeah. And that really helped because I can see what I probably do like, probably don't like in a college and how big it is, how small it is, what their percentage of scholarships are. And mm -hmm. that was really helpful for me to start thinking like as a junior, like some college is coming up and I really have to start thinking about these things. Right. So it really helped. My name is Nettie Okobanye and I went to Marion Catholic High School and there I did like a number of things but I would say like my most favorite involvements had to be volleyball and NHS 
and now I'm going to Vanderbilt University to study computer science. I'm Nayo Kabonye, and if you haven't noticed already, we're twins. So I also went to Marion Catholic High School and I graduated from there as well. And I did about the same things as her, except I was probably a little bit better at volleyball. <laughs> Um, I'm going to Vanderbilt University as well. I'm majoring in engineering science on a pre-med track, and I'm really excited about that, so yeah. I feel like a lot of it was a mental game for me, just like not thinking that like I was like gonna measure up or like not going to be able to, um, yeah, like compete at such a, like a high like level with like other students. Um, also the ACT prep that we had, that was very helpful because I'm personally not a very good test taker. I struggle with like time tests. I think it's a lot of it has to do with that anxiety. Um, so having that for free, like for like, I think it was two, two or three years because I did it my sophomore year also, that definitely prepared me <laughs> for taking the test. My name is Celeste Ortiz. I am a recipient of the Chick Evans Scholarship and will be attending Northwestern University in the fall. And I owe that all to the fact that I am an HFS alum. Joining HFS really showed me that there are so many opportunities that I wouldn't have known about if I wasn't a part of this organization. Like, I was interested in the medical field, but I, re I didn't really know how to take advantage of it. So, Things like HFS, like Body Insight, or just career fairs that they brought to my attention really helped open my eyes to like the different things that I can do in the medical field. So when I did Body Insight, like I dissected cow eyeballs, like that, <laughs> that really exposed me to like the technology that you use to dissect cow eyeballs. So like that kind of really helped me like realize that my career inspiration was like from all these opportunities I got to take a hold of. Right, and I feel like HFS really helped me with like goal setting. So like having like going to like director of academics meetings, like each time we had to like set a new goal for ourselves. So kind of like having like, okay, this month I'm going to focus on like improving my GPA or this oh, month right, I'm right. going to join a new club or this month I'm going to start working on like this little project. So that kind of helped me a lot and kind of like getting myself in focus and like on task and like kind of like figuring out what I want for myself. I greatly appreciate, you know, like HFS for like having that like service requirement because you know like there were times where I'm like I don't have time to do it or like I'm too tired to do it but it's I never really like volunteered so much before but like seeing like that impact that it has like I don't yeah I'm I'm really glad that I did it and I want to continue doing it in the future. <laughs> One of the first things I remember is like Miss Nikita telling us to like go join clubs. And it's like we knew it was something like important to do, but like as freshmen, it's like someone's telling you to go join a club or even go start a club. And it's like, no, no I'm right. not doing I'm that. Sorry, no, no, I don't want to introduce myself <laughs> to new people. Like, no. And basically, she kind of just like gave us that extra push to like actually like go out and like do things. So, like, because of her, we joined like different clubs, which I do think helped us in like the the college application process because it like made us look like well-rounded and like mm -hmm. it made us also figure out like that we actually like certain things like Generation yeah. Green was like um, an environmental club that was actually like so fun to like be a part of and stuff like that so I really enjoyed that. I think even so like our relationship with Miss Makita is more than like on academic level yeah. like I don't want to call her my friend, but I think <laughs> like she's like kind of like that mentor yeah, slash mentor. friend. Like she really helps out and is supportive and asks us how we're doing along with how we're doing with academics. But I think it's a good relationship to have. And she's also someone to learn from. She will come to our volleyball game sometimes, but just learning from her and just understanding how she wants us to succeed. But also having that person to look up to was really helpful. And she was also like not scared to tell us like what we needed to like right. hear. And she'll be like, "You guys have to do this." Yeah. And be like, "Dang, we actually, actually have, have to, to do, do it." it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>
So each year in a normal year, HFS has uh, a variety of events that would normally be hosted in person. Uh, we start the year off with a kickoff event. Uh, we have a fall service project every year that everybody really enjoys. I always do something around the holidays. Then in the spring, we have a financial literacy workshop in our college and career day. And we end the year with a celebration for the scholars. The transition to the virtual space was challenging. Um, I think that, first of all, for the students, they were finding themselves having to transition not only to the virtual space for HFS and maybe other scholarship programs, but also in high school. And so they were finding that their entire lives were spent on the computer and they were lacking that true social interaction. I think a lot of them felt very isolated. I think I realized how devastating remote learning could be for some of the scholars once I started hearing about some of them actually kind of taking medical leave from school. Coming into HFS, they perform well in school, they're, they're motivated, they're, they're involved in their communities, and then so much of that structure I think was pulled away from them. But when you find out that some of them are having such a hard time that they're their grades are dropping, that their, their parents are legitimately very, very worried about them. So that was really impactful for me because it made me realize that we really do have a place in providing the social emotional support. Um, and that actually a priority needs to be connections, that a priority needs to be family and community. We actually were able to add programming and we started our college and career connections last year. Panels of volunteers who log in share their experience in a certain career field or navigating the college process, you know, a little bit of both. And they were really impactful, really meaningful. You know, they gained a lot of knowledge and it really gave our mentors and, and other volunteers an opportunity to continue to interact with the students throughout the year. What I'm most excited for for our students is, you know, they go to these really great high schools throughout the Chicagoland area, and these schools provide a rigorous academic environment for them. They provide, you know, structure and community for them. And then as their scholarship organization, we are able to build on that. And so we're able to create this additional community um, and we are able to continue to connect them with resources and opportunities and a network of people that they maybe otherwise wouldn't have. And so we really believe that by creating a family atmosphere where trust and love are kind of the foundation, they are willing to be open to what we have to offer. We are really trying to build them up as individuals, build ourselves up as an organization, and make sure that they have the, the confidence and the knowledge to, to take some risks in life and to take on new opportunities and to try new things and, and to feel comfortable you know, continuing to grow into who they are. Happy Leadership Breakfast. My name is Riley Ramirez and I'm an HFS alum class of 2016. I went to Trinity High School over in River Forest and then went on to get my bachelor's degree down at U of I in Champaign. And I recently got my master's degree in social work over at Dominican this past May, which is super exciting. And I'm super grateful to have the opportunity to speak at the Leadership Breakfast this year. And I know that we're still meeting virtually, but this is such an important event to support the HFS mission and all that HFS does for the young minds of tomorrow and I'm so eager to be in a position in my life now where I can give back to the community and organization that gave so much to me because without you know what HFS provided to me I wouldn't have been able to get such an amazing education and not just education but I learned professionalism and accountability and you know it gave me the tools to really develop into a mature responsible young adult and 
some of the friendships that I've made at HFS are still lifelong for me and I still keep in touch with my mentor and I just had a call with Miss Desiree two weeks ago and so I couldn't be more excited to continue to support HFS and I'm personally so thankful to all of the donors, the board and everyone that makes HFS run effectively. I'm just so grateful and happy to be speaking today and I can't wait to see what the next class of HFS students comes in and does. Well, for starters, I learned that I am not a virtual learner. <laughs> you guys, out of all of the rest of the scholarships that I have, you guys were the only scholarship that actually constantly kept reaching out. Since I wasn't really able to see my mentor in person anymore, uh, we did. they uh, provided us with Zoom meetings like during the escape room that helps me connect with my mentor more. You guys had hangouts, you guys had us, you know, checked in on us to make sure that we were finishing the year and that we had support and I think that's something that really helped a lot of students, especially yeah, especially me. Well, hello, my name is Donnie Stanton. I'm currently a rising junior at Fenwick High School, class of 2023. Um, I am currently in the robotics club, the speech team, the debate team, and I'm thinking about joining track. Uh, my name is Demi Valle. I am part of the class of 2022. I go to Fenwick High School and some of the activities that I'm doing right now, I actually started my swim season this past Monday at Fenwick. Uh, my name is Sean Hawthorne. I go to Marist High School and I'm the class of 2023. I think that knowing that this year is going to be hard, you know, with the college process and just senior year itself, I, I feel supported by you guys and that's something that I love most about HFS. HFS has helped me grow as a person by being given all the opportunity of speaking at events and being in videos and just I think being a part of a big community helps boost my confidence. It's definitely helped me at school. I mean I've taken leadership roles in like clubs and in my water polo team during season. I think I can thank HFS for helping me grow and you know, just be a more outgoing person. You guys have really made me go into depth about my career. Like, rather, like when I was going into the scholarship, I really didn't even know what a career was, honestly. I never knew that I had to choose something to be. Thought I was just gonna go to college and just say, hey, I'm out of college, now what do I do? HFS is kind of like a second family. They will uh, help with different situations that maybe you didn't feel comfortable going to your parents with or uh, like school problem, tutoring maybe. Well, I, I know the service hours part was tough to do when you couldn't go in person and they, they helped by allowing me to do it kind of more virtually, I guess. Uh, I created greeting cards to people that I knew in person from my old church, uh, kind of more elderly pre people that I would uh, create cards for them and that allowed me to gain service hours. And they also uh, keep me motivated to push me to get straight A's. So during COVID, we made sure that our directors were available for our scholars and their families throughout the whole time. Um, we did not stop any of our programming. We adjusted to what was going on because we knew that they needed one, some stability, you know, with their routines because everything else was changing. And then two, we just knew that, you know, resources were needed. So whether that was, you know, food resources or academic resources, whatever it may be. And so we really didn't skip a beat. We continued on. Um, our directors were still meeting with their scholars. We moved everything virtual. Um, so our families knew that we were there for them when they needed it. With COVID happening, we were able to mobilize as a staff. And what that meant is that we assessed, okay, where are we? What are we doing? What are our biggest priorities? What are our top priorities? And then we divided and conquered, right? While maintaining those other basic areas, but making sure that the top priorities and the, the essential needs, like our families surviving and our families being okay and comfortable, that's 
what we were focusing on. Good morning, I am Sean Hawthorne, HFS Three Pillar Scholar. I'm an honor student at Marist High School and I have the pleasure of introducing our honoree and keynote speaker, Mr. Shundron A. Thomas. Mr. Thomas served as the president of Northern Trust Asset Management. He also served as a member of the management group for Northern Trust Corporation. Previously, Mr. Thomas served as executive vice president, head of funds, and managed accounts. Mr. Thomas also served as president and chief executive of Northern Trust Securities Incorporated. Prior to joining the asset management executive team, Mr. Thomas served as head of corporate strategy for Northern Trust Corporation. Before joining Northern Trust, Mr. Thomas served as vice president for Goldman Sachs and held positions in sales, trading, and research with Morgan Stanley. We are thrilled to have Mr. Thomas with us today as our honoree and keynote speaker. Please join me and welcome Mr. Sundron A. Thomas. My name is Sundron Thomas. Professionally, I serve as president of Northern Trust Asset Management. It is a very special privilege to be designated as the honoree for the 15th annual HFS Chicago Scholars Leadership Breakfast. I join a long list of respected leaders who have graced this stage. It is likewise a privilege to have the opportunity to share a brief perspective with the attendees and especially the scholars who are our future leaders. The HFS mission of helping underserved students flourish in and out of the classroom resonates strongly with me. I'm a product of Chicago's public school system and I hail from the city's south side. Now, my message today is born from my personal lived experience and particular lessons I've learned on the keys to achieving good success. Now, there was a severe recession in the late 70s and early 80s, and this led to the closing of Wisconsin Steel, which was where my father worked. This resulted in significant financial hardship for our family, as my father had to take a very low paying job, and he often had to work double shifts. Now, it was springtime, and I decided to go out for the Little League baseball team. I'd never played organized baseball. My experience uh, to that point was limited to stickball and some pickup baseball games. I didn't even own a glove. And there was only one Little League team that held from our local park. But hope sprung eternal. Now, there was that not so small matter of getting a glove. I remember begging my father to buy me a glove two days before tryouts. Now, he explained to me that we simply couldn't afford it at that time. Not to be deterred, I decided to go to tryouts anyway, figuring I'd just borrow a glove. Now, just before I was called to go out onto the field, my father pulled up and he had with him a new baseball mitt. Now, you might be thinking this is the setup for the happy ending to my story, but this wasn't the case. My tryout in the outfield lasted about two to three minutes, and I was actually cut from the team that very day. I was ruthlessly ridiculed by the older kids who found it especially entertaining that my dad had bought me a new glove. Now, I felt terrible. I felt terrible that my dad had made that sacrifice to make that purchase. It, it took me hours to summon the courage to go home, and when I finally saw my father, I began to cry. I remember apologizing for wasting his money. And I remember as if it was yesterday, what happened next. He took his fingers, wiping the tears from my face, and he told me three very important things. He said, son, you never have to apologize for trying. It's only wasted or it's only a wasted purchase if you choose not to use it. And finally he said, that's not the only part or the only team so you just have to keep trying. And so that's what I did. I found out about tryouts at a league that was several miles from our home, and I rode my bike there and I tried out. <laughs> this time I tried out for the infield, and I made the team. Now, it took quite a bit of effort to play in this league. I usually had to ride my bike four miles each way for daily practice and for games. Now, to be sure, I never turned out to be better than an average baseball player. But that experience from Nearly 37 years ago, 
taught me what was required to have success in any area of life. So today, I offer you the same threefold formula involving grit, grace, and gratitude. First, there's grit. Grit is courage or resolve. It is strength of character that causes you to per persevere in the face of challenges and obstacles. Now, anything worth achieving in life will require hard work. We all face challenges. And the truth is that some of us face greater hardship than others. However, we all have an inner desire to make our mark on the world. We find our destiny at the intersections of discipline and desire, passion and perseverance. If you're gonna have good success, it first requires grit. Next, there's grace. Grace can be viewed as unmerited favor, whether it be a divine form of grace or simply the courteous goodwill of others. I've come to see that grace doesn't happen very much when you're standing still. It seems that grace finds us in action. We each are imbued with special gifts. However, it is grace most often revealed in the person of wonderful people that helps us to transform our, our grit and our gifts into good success. Now, the scholars know this well, given the wonderful support of the staff and the mentors that they work with regularly. Each of us has our path made a little easier by the measure of grace that comes from the goodwill of those who aid us on our journey. This brings us to the last element, which is gratitude. Gratitude, simply stated, is thankfulness. It is an attitude of the heart, as I like to say. It involves both thankfulness and joy for the many good things in our lives. See, gratitude means we, we focus on what we have as opposed to what we don't have. Gratitude keeps us humble and healthy. And gratitude is the natural successor to grit and grace. And it establishes a mindset that makes future successes possible. Now, when I consider the growing legacy of HFS Chicago scholars, it is clear to me why the organization has helped so many students flourish. It is the combination of grit, grace, and gratitude that leads to good success. I want to thank you for listening, and I want to wish each of you a life of success and significance. HFS is caring, meaningful, family, family, community, caring, and motivating, passionate, and inspiring, family, family, family. COVID struck when I was a sophomore, in the middle of my sophomore year, so Really, half my high school experience has been that I can't, you know, see my classmates over at HFS in in-person events due to social distancing regulations. So it was a rare chance to get to see them and interact with them. I'm Hugo Nunez, a senior at Fenwick High School. At Fenwick, I am a member of the math team, in which I'm a co-captain, a member of the Key Club, also known as our Community Service Club, in which I am a co-president, and I'm a member of the Investment Club, which I'm a vice president. I'm also a member of two academic teams, which are TEAMS and WISE. TEAMS stands for Tests of Engineering Aptitude in Mathematical Sciences, and WISE stands for Worldwide Youth in Science and Engineering. I started this year as a Three Pillows Scholar, and I participated in the Three Pillows Scholarship Day, and it was a great day. The event I spoke at was the Three Pillars Luncheon. So first we had a lunch at Gibson's Italia, which was on the Chicago River, and then after lunch, almost right away after lunch, it was my turn to speak. So after the good food, I was able to get up there and we were outside, so it was a nice sunny day, had a good breeze going. Stood in the middle of everybody, not in front, which was, it was pretty cool to be like a part of it rather than just somebody, you know, up front. And I talked to them about leadership and what leadership means to me. You know, we were all selected as leaders in HFS to go to this event and represent HFS as HFS scholars have a place in solving issues that matter to us personally. 
The Three Pillars Endowment Program is a unique opportunity to ensure the continued and future success of HFS Chicago Scholars. By endowing a scholarship, you are building the HFS program and creating a legacy. We encourage and need your support to continue the cycle of success for high-achieving scholars from low-income families and communities. Three Pillar Scholars are rising junior and senior HFS scholars, having at least a 3.5 GPA, and who exemplify the three pillars of HFS, academic excellence, college readiness, and lifelong mentoring. The endowment program progress is exciting. 15 donors have endowed 23 scholarships, and there are commitments to date of over $1.1 million. To learn more about the Three Pillars Endowment Program and its benefits, please go to our website. Well, first and foremost, I would say thank you from the bottom of my heart. But secondly, I would like to get to know some of the donors. It was something that was unique to the Three Pillars Luncheon in that I got to meet with the donors who personally donate to HFS and support their mission. I would like to give a thank you to the people at HFS who don't always get the thanks they deserve. Those who work behind the scenes who we don't see all day working, but they're there supporting our mission and keeping us going. No matter where we are or what we're doing, Mr. Mike Canelli always finds a way to say hi to me. Um, he remembers from when I was a scholar, he knows about where I went to school. He always asks about my mom or talk about college football and so he always remembers those details which is shocking after all these years. With speaking to what Wendy was mentioning about HFS being more than just an organization and being a family, when he found out that I was going to be valedictorian, he definitely made it a point to, to make himself known and say, you know what, we're going to, I'm going to go to your house and I need to meet your mom. I, I need to meet her and we need to sit down and we need to talk and I need to, to tell her all these things and how amazing it is that you're going to be this valedictorian. And so he really made it a point to go out of his way. It is an honor to introduce our founder and our leader, Mike Canelli. Speak up for the people who have no voice. Speak out for justice. Good morning. My name is Mike Canelli, and I'm the founder and chairman of HFS Chicago Scholars. I'm here to say thank you so very much. Thanks to Shundron Thomas of Northern Trust for inspiring us all with his words and his lifetime of actions. Thanks to Pat Nash of Kirkland and & Ellis and Kevin Lavin of Ankara for leading yet another record-breaking fundraising year. Thanks to all our donors for supporting our HFS scholars and believing in our mission. Those scholars and that mission were why we started HFS in 1992. We saw an opportunity to work with some great kids and families and neighborhoods that don't always get attention, who maybe don't have that voice, didn't have that advocate. Our goal was to help level the playing field and change and accelerate the trajectory of hardworking kids who simply needed a break. We wanted to give kids great opportunities and to pair those opportunities with a heavy dose of academic guidance and mentoring, but also to add challenge and personal accountability. We wanted to make a difference in Chicago. Some 28 years later, our plan and our work hasn't changed. And we are so proud of and blessed by the accomplishments of our scholars. We've seen hardworking Chicago high schoolers flourish in and out of the classroom through the help and guidance of our HFS family and our lifelong mentoring, college readiness, and academic excellence programs. We are so very proud of all of our scholars across the decades. Now I heard today from Nettie and Naya, Brooke and Celeste, Wendy and Lucy, 
and how their HFS journey helped launch them to amazing places like Vanderbilt, Northwestern, Wisconsin, and careers in medicine, education, and business. And I know we all have a swell of pride as we think across the years to 28 years of working with at-risk high school kids in Chicago, watching them grow, and ultimately sending them on to Harvard and Penn and Howard and Notre Dame and Illinois and Illinois State, DePaul, Marquette, so many great schools. We think of those kids who are now doctors and teachers and bankers and lawyers and business leaders. I know I think very fondly of the amazing parents, and grandparents, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles who scrapped to help their kids and the kids from broken homes who joined the HFS family. The demands we put on their scholars and their intrepid response to our demands. And I think of you, our donors, who've helped us grow and to those of you who've established legacies and perpetual scholarships through our Three Pillars Fund. HFS is a family. We preach it. We talk about it all the time, every time we get together with our kids. Like any family, day by day, year after year, through nurture and love and care, everyone in the family grows. So too, the HFS family has grown, and it will continue to grow and do even more great things. Friends, we live in an imperfect world where even opportunity can seem out of reach for so many. But we can achieve so much by giving just a little of ourselves. And that little we can give is not only to model and mentor and encourage drive and determination, but to make a difference in the life of a child, in the character and the very humanity of our city and our world. We are able to make that difference only because of you. Because of you, we can speak up for the people who have no voice. We can speak out for justice for them. We all stand at a time where our city and our entire world need us to speak up for each other. And thanks to you, we're going to keep doing just that at HFS. Thanks so very much for your support, and God bless you all. Thank you to our honoree, Chandran A. Thomas, as well as our distinguished co-chairs, Kevin Lavin and Patrick J. Nash, Jr. I would like to thank our board of directors, our Young Professionals Board. We appreciate your time, your talent, and your resources to help our scholars have an opportunity to succeed. Thank you to our mentors for being a great part of our scholar story. A special thank you to our staff who do so much to make sure that our scholars have the support that they need. We truly appreciate you. And to every educator, thank you for helping our future leaders. We are stronger together. HFS is my second family and my second support system. HFS means to me support, caring, and hopeful. Family, service, supportive, and nurturing. Loving, supportive, and successful. Fun, and necessary. <laughs>